So, you guys saw how I measured the struts, how they're about three and a half inches too long in order to prevent the hatch from hitting the roof. Um, Bash offered, or Bash is sending me some new struts. Uh, he, this guy's stand up. He's said he's never heard anybody have any issues like this. But I'm getting to the point where I don't even know if I want to fix this. We're looking at, well, I'm looking at getting a new hatch or a used hatch off another Cherokee. Looking to have a bumper built. Uh, current state of mind is the hatch struts should be here in about a week. And I messaged Bash tonight and I just told him this isn't going to work. Uh, I've been messing with this since I got it and I've been having issues. So I think what we're going to do is overall... While the Kratos tire here is built solid and it looks good, it's just not functioning right for my Jeep. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove the hatch, remove the Kratos tire here, go back to some stock struts. I'm going to send Bash all the all the new struts that he sent me, the custom length ones and the ones that came in the kit. Maybe he can reuse them. Uh, once we get uh, another hatch on the back, we'll paint it to match the Jeep. Uh, looking at having a two-wheeler bumper built. Uh, been talking to Gabe at Winding Road Fabs, and he said he could build me a tire carrier if I choose to go that route. Um, I'll show you something else I discovered while I was doing this. There's well, I'll just tell you guys. I found out that the hatch not only put a dent in the roof, but it sagged with the extra weight a little bit and put a couple scratches in the bumper and. To me, it's just not worth messing with. If I've got to replace the hatch already, I've got to do the dent in the roof and repaint the roof. I'm just going to fix it once and just put a stock hatch on it. Um, kind of sucks this was a really badass idea. I, I mean, I love the idea of having the tire carrier on the hatch, but apparently the XJ bodies are not as strong as the WJ or the WK bodies, like the rest of his tire carriers. Um, big shout out to Bash, HK Off-Road for all the help. A lot of late night responses with my crazy work schedule. Uh, still a stand up guy. If I had a WK or WJ all day long, I'd buy, buy his sliders, I'd buy his wind pumper, I'd even probably buy this tire carrier again. Um, this dude is stand up and he's all about helping his customers. I've had him even scratching his head with the problems I've had. So, you know, nothing bad to say about the guy, nothing bad to say about HK Off Road. They're great. Uh, reviews for the WKWJ world even some good reviews for the XJ so maybe I just have an odd duck y'all I appreciate you uh, hanging in there for these three videos uh, sorry the conclusion of this is me taking this off going back to a stock hatch but I've tried everything I can I'm burned out thanks for watching God bless so we start by taking the intake off I did the bracket that holds all the throttle cables on and then I took all the bolts out of the valve cover um, my intake tube is very easy, it's just one clamp and the whole assembly comes off. So we get all the bolts out. Now I lay the bolts out how they came off the valve cover, that way I know how they go. We have the new valve cover sitting up there, and you will see it's got these washers that go inside the rubber seals on the valve cover. You can try to pop them out on the as you take it apart, but I'm choosing to leave most of them on the valve cover itself. So once we get this finished up pulled we'll lift it off and out clean the valve cover make sure no debris falls down inside the head i'll show you guys what the inside of the head looks like we'll put new rubber seals and new uh, ccv and a new pcv back here and we'll go from there so here's the old ccv seal here's a new ccv seal this one you can tell is fresh rubber this is 20 is years old and hard gas? no it's for the engine and i got my little helper out here so we're going to put this in, we'll put the new CCV in, and then we'll do the other side with the PCV over here. So once again, here's the new dormant seal for the PCV. There's the old one. You can tell this is just rock hard. So, we're going to open this up. And I, new PCV. And my little helper's just sing along, keep me company. So we have the new PCV in, the new CCV in, with all new gaskets or under, rubbers underneath them. I'm going to get the new gasket sitting on the head, we're going to wipe down the top end real quick, make sure nothing falls in the motor, and then we'll get the new rubber grommets, there's rubber grommets to sit on here, and we'll go from there. So we have the new gasket laid down, there's locating holes here, and back here. Then you put, it has new rubber seals here, you reuse the old metal washers, 
and then all your bolts fit correspondingly. So we have all this situated. We're going to try to wiggle the head down. Uh, one of the things I had to do that I didn't show you guys, I had to remove this spring clamp so the head would clear adequately enough. So, we'll get this situated. Hold on a second, buddy. I'm going to get this all situ uh, situated, and then I'll snug start snugging bolts down and reassemble. So here is the valve cover all in. You guys can see all the bolts. This will sit on this stud right here, like this. Just to hold this, hold it in place, and then everything else went back accordingly. Pardon me, I got kids out here trying to help me out today. We're gonna get the intake back on. We gotta still get the throttle body bracket on here, or the cable bracket, and we'll hook up all the cables. And don't mind the zip ties. That's how I fix my cruise control. So we'll bolt these parts down where they go. You guys can see the cables here. They'll get bolted accordingly and then hook it all up. So here's the ins finish install. You guys can see where it had to zip tie the cruise control cable. This cable, or this breather tube here is a little short, so I'll have to get a new hose. But I thought we're looking good. You guys can see I got a grubby paw reaching up here trying to help out. So we'll fire it up, we'll check for leaks, and we gotta secure our cables here. Almost forgot to do that. We'll secure them down real quick. Give it a good test fire. So here we go. Mind the dirt. So far, it looks dry up here. We'll walk around this side, check the other side of the valve cover. Nice and dry. Nothing out of the CCV or out of the PCV. Looking good. I think we're going to call this a fix. So, you guys saw in Gus Gus, I just got done to the valve cover gasket, uh, CCV, PCV, and the seals form. Uh, I'm going to try not to pace around because I have a bad habit of doing that too. So, next project is going to be yanking the AC compressor and all the crap that goes with it because I don't need it. That's going to be another video. Uh, put the brackets on from eBay I got. And then we'll go ahead and relocate the alternator. I need to look at it and see how exactly it comes out from underneath the bottom. And we'll get that going with the new belt. That being said, we also have to get my KC lights actually wired up. They've been sitting on the Jeep for a little while. And then from there we're waiting on the 8.25 disc brake conversion kit from G2 coming from Fulmo Parts. We're waiting on a hood scoop from Unlimited Fiberglass out of Hesperia, California. Because we're going to ditch the hood vents. So those are some upcoming videos for y'all to look for. Uh, we're getting ready to get into peak season for work. So it's my time to scramble on the Jeep get it ready for winter excuse me so do what i can here and now <sighs> thanks for watching y'all have a good one god bless